Oh. Hey guys, what's up? Just them little. I'll be like, why my fingers be so like my piece is like huge. Like, why is your piece so wide? I don't know. I know normal people that. Ah, uh, I am normal. I don't know what you're talking about. I am normal. Did you have mama? No. Bath and body. I forgot Ooh. the name of the bath and body. It smells good, too. <sighs> Thank you. You look good. Mm, you, too. So, why I'm gone? What's up, y'all? What's, what's up, guys? <laughs> We're here for you. So, pretty much, I don't know. We want to have a conversation. We want to talk. Let me tell you, a girl burnt me this morning. I burnt she was us the, playing. She, playing. <laughs> Man. I burnt us. So Man. I, I forgot what I did to her this morning. Then she was running after me, trying to catch me. And then I ran in the bathroom and I was trying to stop her. But I don't know the little bracelet I be having on my Pandora bracelet. It hit what what the is it? wax warmer. The, yeah, and that whole thing broke and it burnt me all on this side and it burnt my hand too. So I got burnt too. We both got burnt. I got blister right there. I don't know if y'all can see it. They can't see it. <laughs> Feel sorry for me. No, they can't see it. <laughs> you all right. We ain't, we good. We just put some cocoa butter on it and we good. And we good. Okay. So, um, pretty much we want to talk about gratitude. Oh, gratitude, having grace, um, gratefulness. Yeah. That you're grateful for. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You want to start or you want me to go ahead? No, I want you to go ahead and start, love. All right. So, basically, um, I kind of felt like a lot of things that happened in my past and definitely present um, spoke about grace for me. Having gratitude, just having an open mind and trying to, you know, what that position I was in at that time, I just tried to make the best of it to get to the next step because I always had a sound mind that was telling me, hey, this is just the storm right now. There's better. There's going to be calm. There's going to be that peace you're looking for, right? So, one incident. Yeah. So, one incident in particular. Let me tell y'all what happened to me. So, that I already knew God had something better for me, right? So, babe, um, I don't know. I, I believe I probably was on the phone with you most likely. Um... And it was at that time where I was going through that issue with my mom and my stepdad or whatever. And one day I was leaving work. It was probably like three, four o'clock in the evening time or whatever, the afternoon time. And I was driving home and I, I think I was on the phone with you, babe. Maybe. I'm, I'm going to get into it and then we're going to confirm. We'll confirm. And um, I was driving and I just remember being on the phone and um. Like, just driving, I'm in the car by myself. I just remember being on the phone, like I said. And all of a sudden, I heard this sound. So, I'm like, what the fuck is that? So, girl, I end up, like, just still driving because in my mind, you know that little thing that be up under your um, under your engine? That little, that little part that, um, you know, from the bumper? I thought that was actually, for some reason, I don't know, I thought that fell off. And I'm like, fuck. So <laughs> this stud was driving on the side of me. So the stud was like, hey, your, your headlight is under your car. So bitch, I'm like, my what? Bitch, like I heard the sound, but she was like, like she literally like slowed down. We ride inside. It's like, it's like I wasn't driving fast. I was like, I think I was trying to get to that 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 Publix on 183rd because I remember I was on 183rd and I was trying to get to that Publix just so I can pull in because that's like a two way street. And girl, girl, girl was like, "Yo, like you're," I was like, "What?" So I kind of, you know, murdered off into the little turning lane or whatever, and I got out. And I was like, "Oh my fucking god!" Like it was just so embarrassing. I was like, "Yo, my headlight was literally." dragging up under my car so your so, eye had fell on us so like, yes the my my right side of the, of the headlight had no fell <laughs> and it was up under the car and i was literally dragging it but the crazy part about it is that damn headlight hold on because it ain't crack it ain't have not one scratch it ain't nothing it just for some reason fell under 
And I'm telling you, I'm driving and all I hear is, and I'm like, what the hell is this now? I swear to God, I thought it was the bumper. <laughs> so great, it wasn't the bumper. So you wasn't on the phone with me. No, I wasn't You remember me that. saying, damn, remember my, okay, so you wasn't on the phone with me. So, but this was around the time we was talking. So I don't know who I was on the phone with, but I just remember being on the phone. And I'm like, oh my God, my bumper. And the girl tried to, you know, come over and kind of help me out or whatever. But I was like, I, I knew how to detach it, um, so I ended up detaching the headlight or whatever, and I just put it in the car, and I just drove to the house. And I was just, like, so embarrassed. I was embarrassed, but I ain't feel it stopped me because at that time, headlight had done came off. I was talking with um, this dude way before talking to, talking to Babe, and my, my rear view mirror had done broke off. So it was like this car was... My my Grand Prix Pontiac, I had that. That was my baby. My Pontiac, <laughs> yo, my Pontiac, that was a rider. And she was just like slowly breaking down. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Lord, oh my God. Like, I'm in a situation where I'm at, where I'm at with my kids right now. Um, you know, the, like I said, there was nothing wrong with the headlight. So I was able to put it back on. But in that midst of time, that's like... Thank God I, I can do little things in the car other than just pump the gas or whatever. She like pump the gas though. Like Ooh. like where, where y'all see now, I don't really pump the gas. You see, that was a blessing because I used to always pump the gas or whatever. Now my baby's like, yo, if I'm with you, ain't no pumping gas or whatever. But if I'm alone, that's not an issue for me. But um, I knew how to do those little things for myself. So I always had a positive outcome and a positive outlook of the situation I was going through because I didn't let that shit stop me. Like I see my car is breaking down at this time. And it was literally, I felt like, yes, I was embarrassed, but it ain't stopped my flow because I know at the end of the day, this same little car that's breaking down on me is going to get me to work. My whole plan was to go to work. As long as I'm able to go to work and get money, Everything else can't wait. That should have come later. Like, I already knew God was going to put shit in order in place. But for me, I felt like that was a test to see if I was grateful for what I had at the moment. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, for what I had at that moment, you're going to break down. You're going to get depressed. You're going to not appreciate this little thing that can at least get you to A to B. Like, for me, like, these are things that was going through my mind. Yes, it's breaking down, whatever, but what you going to do with it? Mm -hmm. You going to let it really break you down and not move further? Or you going to let it break down? You going to let it break down and you going to keep moving further? Which one is going to be? So I already knew God was testing me. A lot of things, I always took heed of that because I felt like God put me in these tests to see when he do elevate me and get me higher, will I be grateful for what I already had? So that was my reason of having gratitude and knowing that there was uh, sunshine after the rain. After the rain. <laughs> hey, oh. <laughs> wow. So that's just, that was just my little, uh, you know, that was my story on what ended up happening to me and how I felt like I knew that there was better mm. on the other side. I just knew it. Cool. Well, so, hi, I mean, what do you want to say? Let's see. Man, I have so much to be grateful for. Um, I can start off with, as a kid, I was very sickly, which means I had asthma and I had epilepsy. So, um, I'm, out, I'm so grateful that I overcame epilepsy because the thing, how my health issues affected each other was if I had an asthma attack, Mm -hmm. It triggered my epilepsy. If I had a, a, a epilepsy attack procedure, it triggered my asthma. So I was always sick as a kid. Like mm -hmm. literally, my parents was for I was forever at a specialist. Um, I was always getting these um, EEGs where they put the little stickers on your head mm -hmm. and they they just do all this weird stuff to you. I was always getting skin tested to find out what new allergies. I had, I should have lived in a bubble. I should have lived in a bubble. That's why you say about Dante. Like, he, he allergic to everything. He needs to be in a bubble. So, like, I remember the first allergy test I got, 
It said I was allergic to moss, dust, um, grass, wow. uh, flowers. Like, mm -hmm. don't bring none of that stuff around me. How do I even, how was I even out there functioning and breathing the air that God had provided for me? And I can remember the time in my life where um, I was real sick to the point I had an asthma attack. And I was literally like, okay, God, like, I can't do this no more. I don't even want to live anymore because guess what? What? I, I was. I was like 15 or 16 years old. Because I, I was always having asthma attacks. Like, it was a weekly occurrence. I was having one or the other. Wow. So, I was so grateful that when I had that last asthma attack, that big asthma attack, and... um. I remember my parents, we was in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. My dad was trying to get me to New Orleans because we were supposed to be leaving the next day going to Germany. Mm -hmm. And we ended up having to stay. I had to stay in the hospital for like three or four days. But in the midst of me being there, I was like, okay, God, I know you real because I saw you. Like, I can remember telling my parents, telling the doctors, like, I see this light. And I could see my parents, like, it was like I was having an out-of-body experience. Mm -hmm. And I could see my parents, and they were standing there. They was holding each other. They was crying. They was praying. But for me, I was ready to give up because, heck, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't, I couldn't play basketball. I couldn't do all the stuff that other kids could do uh -huh. because of this asthma. And so I remember um, laying there in the hospital and everything, and I was talking to God. I was like, okay, I believe you. I, I understand that you I was will. like, I just want to be normal. I just want to be able to do what other kids do. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to play basketball. I want to do all these things. And we was getting ready to go to Germany, like I said. And I remember going to Germany. And that first, um, I, was, I think it was like a sophomore. No, it was. I was a junior in high school. Mm -hmm. And going to, to Germany and being able to play basketball for the first time in my life and I didn't have any issues. I had no problems with my breathing. What did you feel was different then? I had asked God. I talked to him. I said, God, I understand that you're real. I just need for you to make it possible for me to do the same things that other people are doing. Okay, okay. That the other kids my age, because I just felt like I had missed out on so much. Mm -hmm. Like, I couldn't do what my friends were doing. And so, that year, my uh, junior in high school, I played on JV basketball. And I, I didn't have any issues with my asthma. You know, of course, I had my asthma inhaler. Um, I had already stopped taking my... I, myself, had personally stopped taking the medication because I felt like this medicine is not working. You guys got me taking these milligrams, a thousand of milligrams of this, a thousand milligrams of that. And I'm still having these seizures. I'm still having these asthma attacks. So I had stopped taking it. And <laughs> it was crazy because like literally this vein, there's no veins in this arm because I had to go every month to get blood drawn. Wow. So it was like finding a vein over here is, yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> It's not happening. Wow. And this one over here, Lord Jesus, pop they don't they don't poke me so much in this one that I got scar tissue. But it was just being able to get out there and run the full court on the basketball and do the little sprints that everybody else was doing because I was fast and I could run. Mm -hmm. I had the speed and everything to run on track and everything, but my asthma was affecting me where I couldn't do it. And when um, I'm just grateful that that was my experience where I was able to come o overcome epilepsy and be able to do these things, you know, because some people, even in life as adults, they still have those same health issues they had as a, um, as a childhood illness and it still affects them. Yes, I still have asthma, but it's not as bad as it used to be, but that's one thing I'm I'm definitely grateful for. I'm very grateful that um, growing up in the military, I was able to experience different things. So now that even as an adult, I know how to handle things mm -hmm. differently. You know, I, I'm I, babe. You could testify. I'm not a um, a very argumentative person, unless you really take me out of my element. 
She's not. She's not. You got to really take her out of her element in order for her to get out of character. For her to get out of character, it'll take a minute. I'll be messing with her or whatever, but it's, it's nothing but fun. And that's the type of relationship I felt I want. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that already is on the same level with me. She, you know, we, we, when it comes to that type of things, we already know how to interact with each other. And we both know that we had a past. I got a past. I can literally talk to my wife and tell her about my past. She can talk to me about her past and we can kind of know, okay, you went through that how you did. I went through this how I did. So now let's talk about it. Let's get it off us. And so we can move forward further, you know, move forward with, with our life because it happened. We can't help that. Yes, it's our past. Let's leave that shit in the past. But at the same time, if you're feeling some type of way, this hurts you in your past and I can't talk to my spouse about it. It's a problem. I, that's a, it is a problem. It's a big problem because I got to hold all this to myself. You supposed to be my partner. And you supposed to be my confidant. Like you supp I supposed to be comfortable with that shit. And as y'all saw our relationship in the beginning, I was not comfortable with that stuff. It was a lot of stuff that when I came in a relationship, I used to be like, um, why you do things this way? Why you do these things this way? Because I never saw it. If it was done, it, it, it wasn't presented in front of me. I never saw that type of stuff. But I opened up my mind to understand that, hey, this person wasn't raised the way you was. This person got a whole different religion, a whole different culture. She raised all around the world. So she knows and she saw different things you haven't saw. So why not settle myself down in a way to be like, oh, okay, well, shit, let me see it too. Because for her, she was like, oh, okay, well, yes, I've traveled. I did all these things, but what you're showing me now and what I see out of you, shit, I didn't see that before. Right. So we was talking this morning about the cleaning of the meat. When I met Babe, we used to just put salt on our, our, our chicken and use the knife and scrape it like that. We never used the, the lime and vinegar. And so I had fixed babes and chicken before I knew how she cleaned her chicken. And she was like, well, your chicken tastes different than mine. So I was just like, well, I don't know, you know, whatever. But then the next time I went to cook and she was watching, she was like, hey, you're not cleaning the chicken right. Right. Like I was right there and I saw, but she was like, well, this is how we used to do. Okay. Well, open up your mind. Let me kind of teach you something now. Now I can teach you how, hey, in, in my culture, Bitch, a, a bitch ain't gonna eat at your house if you make it like this. Like, a bitch, like, <laughs> that's that's already you know. strike one. You know what I'm saying? Like you come at somebody like daddy and they actually see you cooking this and you're cleaning your meat like this, they ain't gonna eat from you. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. In my culture, if you ain't cleaning it with some lemon, salt, and vinegar, you ain't cleaning it right. Period. So I kind of, you know, and she was open to that, like, okay, well, hey, let me see how you do it. So broke it down. Okay, this is step one. This is step two. This and, and all my kids, they do the same thing. Cause I ain't eating it. <laughs> I'm not eating it. Like it has to be done a certain way. But I can you you see how baby love trying these different dishes. And I love that. But she do what she do. I do what I do. And and this is how we're able to connect and come together. Cause if she can toss out those, you know, meals and those dishes. When I come with my Haitian dishes and what I already know, oh, it's a great combination. It's a great combination. We can do this. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm like, I love the fact that, okay, and that's another thing. Bay had that issue when we first started. Bay will bring me food, everything, everywhere. You know how some people, they don't like to touch their, their food to touch or whatever. That wasn't my main issue. My issue was presentation. Bring me something that look good for, I don't even want that bitch decent. I want it to look good enough for me to eat. So now when she knocking their ass with that presentation, y'all see why my baby got that 100. Stop playing with her. Stop playing with her. She got that 100 because she be like, they told me I got to fix it a certain way. Make that whole fancy if I need to. Yes. Get somebody something that look good. 
whoever, I had never heard of anybody putting parsley flakes on their food just, just to, to make it fancy. to make it look fancy. Just I was like, girl, fancy. we are not in a restaurant. We at home. And that's and that's fine. If Put we, this food on where to start at? Where to start at? In your belly? In the home. <laughs> Stop playing. Stop playing. <laughs> All of that shit start in the home. Boy. So so if I can if I can show you a little something when you when you doing this class and you doing your thing over there, they see that little part. Oh bitch. Oh she done put a whole little Twist to it mm -hmm. because I, I I need it. I don't even want it to be decent. Don't give me nothing decent. No. I want it to look good. I want my food on my plate to look nice. So when we have our restaurant and people come, oh, okay, they got their stuff stacked up and it looks right. It looks how it's supposed to look. So, I mean, that's just that's something just I was able to teach her. And while she's teaching me, you know, other things or whatever, this is how we come together. Yes, and I'm so grateful and, for that. And we're grateful for because it. guess what, we're a team all day. Teamwork make the dream work, baby. That's so sexy. sexy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I mean, I just wanted to talk about that and kind of give y'all what we was grateful for. We're yes. grateful for our family. We're grateful for everybody teaching us what they taught that's us. Right. You know, that's how we was able to get where we got. Because that's guess it. what. And you have to be teachable. Yeah. In order to to get through life. And the thing about grace is, grace is something that's given to you. It's something that you should be appreciative to. Yes. You've got to go through the storms Always. in order to be grateful for anything. Because mm -hmm. if you feel like you can't you can't go through the storms, you're too good to go through a storm, mm -hmm. you're never gonna be grateful for anything. At all. I'm grateful that. In the process of life, I learned that you have to get out there and get it yourself. Oh, uh, yep, yep. It's yep. Uh, you can't always rely on anybody else to give it to you. And that's what because, we're teaching our kids too. Because right? you they can to. give it to you, but there's gonna be some talk behind them giving it to you. Yeah, and do you want the talk? Because I don't want to hear nobody talk. Y'all already know me. I hey, get gone. I don't want nobody to talk about something that I, me as an adult, if I'm trying to adult. You should already know these things. Right. And if you don't know these things, ask because your parents, their self is going to know that, hey, I already taught you this. But see, you don't, sometimes they don't want to hear it from their parents' mouth, babe. Of course not. They don't want to hear it from their parents' mouth. They want to hear it from a whole total stranger mouth. Before, then, they, then they feel happy once they hear it from the stranger. And then they want to shake some shit up. No, I told you this already. I went through this life already. I have not. I'm not going to go through what you went through, but I'm trying to prevent it. Of course. You know, you didn't go through what I went through. I didn't go through what my mom went through, but hey, what I'm trying to do for my youngins coming up, I'm trying to show you that, hey, do it this way before that outside world. Talk to you. Because that's a whole different type of talk. That's just always saying, be grateful for what you have now because God will see you through it and he will get you through it. I mean, my car was breaking down to now where if I walk up in a dealer right now, tell him, babe, if I walk up in now, I can get a car by myself. By herself. Y'all, I'm so proud of my baby. I can walk up in that bitch and get it right now because working on yourself. Working on your credit, because y'all already know ain't nothing. You can have all the money in the world, you but ain't nothing credit. moving if you ain't got no good credit. Ain't nothing is moving. And my credit was a below 400. Stop playing. Hey. Where now I can walk up in the eight. I want that right now. And I'm going to get it. You know, babe came down here, and I got my car. Babe was like, wait a minute. How you get that car? And you ain't getting these people no money. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. My, my credit? Her credit. Now, Bay go in there. Bay got that same credit. Stop playing. We going to get it. Because, see, I already, I already looked at, okay, she can she can do this. She can make some moves or whatever. But it wasn't every move she can make, she can make by herself. We right. get it. So, and, and that happens a lot where there was moves I can make, but there wasn't moves I can make by myself. We right. got it. So, we said, fuck it. Let's come together and let's do these things together because that's why from the get-go, yeah. She had it, but she needed a coal. You all, when you need a coal, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They want to make sure. And, and it wasn't no issue for me. It wasn't no issue for me because I knew where I was going. I knew where I was headed. And I knew God wasn't going to put me in no harm. 
That's right. I knew he wasn't because he got me out of it. And look, four years grace. later, we're going on five years. Man, listen, y'all got more to five see. Five years Y'all got more to see. That's all it is. And we're so oh. grateful for all of this. Because if it if we did not have God with us at this moment, every step of the way, we wouldn't have survived. We wouldn't have. Mm -mm. All mm -mm. right, guys. We're going to come back with y'all, show y'all a little dinner dinner. What we got going on? You cooking? Your face is talking. My legs are walking. <laughs> Bye, guys. It's the recent Fanny Empire. Catch a vibe. Hit the like. Comment and do me a favor. Subscribe. One more thing. Turn on those notifications. It'll never be a dull moment on the recent Fanny Empire. Catch a vibe, hit the like, comment, and do me a favor. Subscribe, one more thing. Turn on those notifications for the recent Fanny 